All right, good morning and welcome to the Dr. Berug Health Literacy Show with my co-host Helise, who is not able to make it into the studio today. But that'll be okay, we'll work it out. We've got a special guest and um, it is going to be a really good conversation, especially on the backdrop of so many people trying to sort through whether you're going to vote Republican or Democrat, I guess whether you're going to re- vote for a liar or a deceiver or something in that space. We all have to, you know, sort through that and make that make sense to us as we have such a wonderful outcome this year in this political race. And it's a wonderful outcome because you get a chance to see exactly where the country is. You get a chance to see exactly where the uh, the excitement of the people has been manipulated to be. Meanwhile, here on the ground, we are working to do what we got to do because, you know, at the end of the day, just like the, the ants and the bees and the birds and the whatever else is out there in nature, we got to figure out how to make it work. So that's what we're doing. We're figuring out how to make it work. And we have a guest who's uh, coming to us via telephone into the studio. And um, we're going to be talking to him about the work that he has created. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. It's good to be connected with people who are making things happen in the midst of the confusion. And uh, this, this is a health matter. And, um, but it's also, you all know I produce the show, the Not On My Watch show. And this is also a Not On My Watch matter as well in that we're not going to allow these things to happen and exist without bringing exposure and attention to them on the Not On My Watch show. Meanwhile, also recognizing the the implication throughout what our brother has produced in that uh, he's produced a, a film that brings attention to our need to reconnect. And uh, I'm not going to go all into it. I'm going to let our brother go into it. Brother Ibrahima, are you there with us? <laughs> Dr. Baruch, I'm right here, sir. Pleasure to talk to you this morning. Great, great, great. And uh, to all your listeners in the Washington, D.C. area, you know. Great, great. Tell us tell us a little bit about yourself, Brother Ibrahima. You know, what's your background? Who are you? You know, how did you get to where you are today? <laughs> That's a great, great question. Um, well, my name is Ibrahim Oba. You know, I hail from Senegambia. You know, I left Africa. I was a child. I didn't know much. You know, I wanted to travel. So I had the chance to travel. I went around Europe, other places. Traveled a few places in Africa before I left. But um, I came to America because I just was coming here for a quick stop, uh, shop, and go to Africa, continue my travels. But my friend convinced me to come to Atlanta. Uh, person I travel with in Europe told me the people in Atlanta look just like me, so I should try to come here before I leave. Uh, so I came to Atlanta, this was back in 2000. Um, I got inspired to make a film here because I had a culture shock here. I had seen so many homeless people here. Uh, like I said, I left Africa as a child, but I never even saw that in Gambia where I was raised. So. I couldn't do nothing else for myself. I had to use the value of my travel experience, the value of the real, uh, the little bit of education that I have, and try to shed light on the situation here that I saw that many people back home don't know about. So I wanted to make a film to educate myself, the people back home, and the people here about homelessness. So uh, for 10 years, I made bracelets and funded an award-winning film, my first film called Food, Clothing, and Shelter, which basically highlights the people on the fluctuation, the homeless problem. But um, it wasn't my intention just to show you that alone, because we all see that in pretty much every city that we live in America and around the world, especially dealing with black people. 
So um, th- uh, uh, after I got done with my first film, it won awards. Um, I was ready to go home. I was tired after ten or well, little over ten years working on a film that means so much to me. I became homeless myself. So after I got done, it's either to run, go home, or go sell the film somewhere, or follow through. So since the subject means so much to me, I decided to follow through. And uh, three years later, I got a new <coughs> film called uh, Food, Clothing, and Shelter, Volume 2, The Ripple Effect. And that deals with um, pretty much uh, solution-based, which is um, with the ripple effect, you get to witness the emotional intelligence that's between humans, the soil, and plants. You also see how communities in Atlanta are building a holistic environmental sustainability as our cultural norm. So today I'm going to be talking to Dr. Baruch about the ripple effect and possibly about the conditions that's happening here. And like he said, not on my watch. So uh, some of the things that we see, you know, with the little bit of education that we have that it costs our parents arm and a leg to send us to school, we can use that value and be able to change stuff and you know, not be a 24th century enslaved person with a degree, you know, because it's a lot happening with us and we could change these things if we just believe in some of the things that we are doing and our children are doing. So the Ripple Effect is one of those projects and it's made by the whole of Atlanta. Everybody made this. I just wrote and directed Dr. Baruch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great, brother. And it's uh, it's an interesting story as you as you share with us you know the some of the great times and maybe the not so great times, but all that contributed in to you creating the uh, food, clothing, and shelter. The ripple effect. Mm-hmm. The ripple effect. What does that mean? Yeah. That's a metaphor. What is that a metaphor telling us? Yeah. Well, the ripple effect, because um, the story of this film came from the Dogon creation story, and it talked about how agriculture was brought to earth by our ancestors to restore order and um, because they looked down from the heavens and saw how it was no order on earth it was chaos down here so they had to hurry up and come help us so with them dr baruch they brought life civilizing skills with them such as plowing the land weaving a basket making a clay pot the basics that everybody civilized themselves off with so our ancestors brought that. And then it says, when a man clay a pot, uh, a plot, uh, make beds, because what they did was they, they came, they prepared the earth, they, they made beds in eight feet long and planted in eight rows in memory of the eight ancestors. So when the neighbor saw that, the neighbor did the same. And the next neighbor saw that, and that neighbor did the same, and the next neighbor, and the next neighbor. And that's how the ripple effect became. And that's how we have the art of agriculture here on Earth. So with our situation, with what's happening with us today, I also see that agriculture could be used to alleviate some of these sufferings and pain that we are dealing with today. Hmm. You, you, you talk about intelligence and the, the energetic or the biointelligence, the emotional intelligence of the soil mm-hmm. and the plants and how that connects up with the human, you know, tell us about that, that intelligence and where we've seen evidence of it and where we can tap into it even in our youthfulness in the, in the realm of, of understanding the concept of a plant having intellect and a plant being able to connect to us and, a, and, and we being able to connect to a plant. Give us, you know, give us a one-on-one course on that. Yeah, well, what had happened to us is um, a lot of this stuff we learned together. I only knew the little basics that I learned from my grandmother in West Africa. And um, but what happened to us on the land is um, I, I remember that everything that my grandmother did, she had attended the size of two football fields by herself. And she had also stored food stacked up to the roof in bags, food that she grew. So as a child, when I saw that, I had a sense of security from hunger. I knew that we didn't have much money, uh, we didn't have much nice clothes, but we have food. That's one thing that I was sure, for sure, that we had was some food. So what happened uh, with my first film, seeing that people are struggling and not doing what grandma did, so I had to remind myself that that's the path I got to go. 
So um, when people saw my first film and donated an acre land, just an acre land, one acre land, and for me to wrap, be able to wrap my arms around the land, I utilized half of the acre. And with that half of acre, hundreds of people have came to that land. I mean, I'm telling you, people come to the door, they take their shoes off. And um, if you watch the ripple effect, you will see some of the testimonies. Uh, when they dip their feet in the soil, that's a special energy that the, that the earth has, you know. And when you take it, when you intake that energy, you feel good about yourself. You feel connected. It's something like you feel you, you know where you come from. Not only that, when you grow a seed, when you plant a seed in the ground, and with the water, the rain, and everything that takes place help germinate that seed, now you know where your food comes from. You grew that seed. And traditionally, you kept the seed to nourish generations after generations. We learned about a lot of the stuff that's growing on the land that we don't know about that we call weed was not actually weed. Some of these things are medicine. We learned about the yellow dog, how it's the best blood purifier, uh, dandelion root. We learned about the plantains. So we were learning about gifts that Mother Earth has on the, on the earth for us, for her children to heal us. So uh, people that came to the farm, everybody was looking for healing, either healing from pain, suffering that you're going through, uh, from living with this kind of environment that don't support our growth, or even living without the land. So we, we have learned a lot about ourselves. We have learned a lot about plants, how they interact with us, how they give to us, and we give to them. So we can't have a life without the plants. You remember George Washington Carver? He mm. spoke to the plants. He told us some of the benefits of the plants. Uh, and in America, we never had peanuts here. Our forefathers brought peanuts with them here, such as um, okra as well. So they brought these things because they knew the benefits of, uh, of these things, that how their children would be able to use these things for a very long time. You know, that's just some of the uh, bits and pieces. But I will also tell you about children coming into the farm and just be like um, so connected. They're experimenting plants. You look at a child and he reminds you of a scientist. You see, so that's a connection there between that plant that the child is exper experimenting and that environment that the child is in to be able to be free up themselves like that. You know, so... The ripple effect definitely demonstrated uh, demonstrated that, and the people that's on the film, everybody did incredible. These are some real testimonies. This is not like made up. It's real people that experience a real healing, and that was the reason why our people always had attended to the land. That's the law of the land is to attend to the land, and it will alleviate the suffering. Mm. And and when you say suffering, you know one of the. Um comments that you made when you first started speaking was the level or the amount of homelessness that yes. existed there in Atlanta. Tell mm -hmm. us how, you know, the work that you're doing and this ripple effect and food, mm -hmm. clothing, and shelter is impacting that, uh, that group of homeless brothers and sisters and others that are there down in Atlanta. Okay. Well, um, Food, Clothing, and Shelter, Volume 1, when we did that film, we had the land and to help that homeless situation with the sales of our film, we were able to use the proceeds to hire guys from shelters and bring them to a holistic environmental sustainability uh, environment, a holistic environment where we were able to give the brothers jobs and they work hard and they told us how they would even come back without getting paid just by seeing this kind of camaraderie, people coming together, being able to work together on the one accord. Uh, also got uh, fed a plant-based diet where people from shelters told us uh, when you eat the food from the shelter for some reason it shut you down when you come to the farm the food that they ate over there somehow opened them up um, we also gave the guys a hand up instead of a hand out so we could we could uh, eradicate homelessness with some of these efforts like films could be sold at every major urban farms and when the film is sold, proceed is to be able to hire guys from shelters and bring them to these farms. And so they can help grow the food that we desperately need because 80% of the food that lags in America is genetically modified. 
And in Atlanta, it don't make no sense. We have so much uh, sun over here and so much rain. Anything grows over here. And then all our men are going to waste. They are homeless downtown. And people call them drug addicts and crackheads, and, and we just reduce our people to nothing. But uh, if you enslave a people for excess amount of time, you spoke about the uh, politics and all of these things. Well, that's a responsibility that you have when you free a people. You are responsible to give these people the right incentives, the right tools, the right environment, put them in the right environment so they will gain the right culture, and the culture is what's going to help you know who you are so you will be able to manage yourself. So my brothers and sisters, they are not offered these things. Matter of fact, some of us are doing everything and anything to offer ourselves these incentives, these tools, and put ourselves in the right environment, you see? So that's the problem. That's what's happening with, uh, with our people. They don't know what's going on. The people don't know who they are. So they ain't going to be able to manage themselves, especially if nobody try to help you to show you, you know, where to go. Hmm. So that's what's happening with our people, but we call them crackheads, drug addicts. I was in other countries that they have more drug addicts than in Atlanta, you know, and they never call those citizens drug addicts. They help them because these were trained professionals, just like the crackheads on the street here. Most of these people are pr trained professionals in the military, work for Delta. You know, they just happen to have a habit. Anybody could have a habit, especially if certain things are not prepared for you. Back then, we didn't have the habit when we had the land. We used the plants and we stimulated ourselves. So we need we had the right stimulation. We didn't need no uh, extra chemicals to stay stimulated. So since we are away from the land and we're in a hostile area, so we're going to need these drugs supposedly to uh, stimulate ourselves. But everybody that came to the farm that I know didn't have this problem, you see? So and some of my friends, these are college graduates. Mm -hmm. And... They don't want to do other works, uh, other jobs, because that is not supporting their spirit, and they know it. So they they have problems with that. But they came to the farm. I've seen them use the best value of their education. They helping children. They taking notes. They doing the right thing. But when they're not on the land, uh, guys are walking around talking to themselves like they have lost it or something. So all of that arts to the environment. If we are not in the right environment, most likely we are not in our right minds either. Hmm. Dr. Baru. Hmm. So the, 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 the soil, the dirt, the the land is is providing a a balance, a grounding such that yes. people who would yes. otherwise be downtown Atlanta or D C or, you know, anywhere exactly. in the world are now able to tap back into the origins of their vibrational frequency and now, you know, and, and, and then normalize. I see my friends suffer here, but guess what? African children will suffer the same if African uh, students and architects go and build Africa like America or Europe. God and forbid. not assimilate Africa with, with, with the origins of Africa, you see? Yeah, God forbid that we just re remake New York City in, in Africa. Right, so that's why we got to assimilate. We got to build the standards like our people had. It's always a reason why. And when we don't do that, then, you know, the elements are not going to support our being. So it's going to be a conflict. So No matter how successful you become, you know. You, you talk about uh, America and you talk about the, this land and not, not, not the land, but this place. And it not supporting us. You know, until we get back into the land, until we until we put our feet in that soil, you know, what is what then is the reason for us not being afforded or, or uh, encouraged to tap back into the soil, to tap back oh, into our Dr. origin? Oh, Dr. Baruch, you're hitting the points, my brother. You're hitting the points. Correct. That's exactly what what happened to us is, and not only here, you know, even back home. They make agriculture look like some kind of slave job, you know. They turn the children off doing that over here because of the lynchings we experience in the plantations, mm -hmm. the beating and all of these things. So when we, when we were told so-called freedom, we drop our holes and run away from them and never want to revisit them again because of our experience. But guess what? Part of the reason why they, were, they brought us to this country, some of us, was that because we mastered the art of agriculture. I told you our forefathers brought that to earth. 
So some of these people knew that, and they brought us here, and we attended to the land, and we never had the problems we had today. We were not overweight. We were not sick this. We did it. You know, we were healthy and strong beings and walking the earth. So when they made it look like a uh, so-called slave job and the people ran away from it and didn't want to do it, that's how you end up having companies like Monsanto because they want to control the food chain. They want to sit on top of the food chain because whoever controls the food control your life. Mm. So when they sit, sat on the food chain, now they're the only one that got to grow the food. So even traditional seeds, if we are not careful, we will lose these gifts, these heirloom seeds that our ancestors left here. Because this company don't want you to grow the food because he want to grow the food. And so uh, if we were, would have continued growing the food, attending to the land, Dr. Baruch, we will be better off than anybody in America because whoever controls the food, again, controls your life. Hmm. And black people was doing this very well. They were growing food. They were doing these things. These things are part of their origins, their, their genes. So when you turn them off and they run away from that, now somebody feel big to go and attend to the land. Hmm. But it always starts from the land. That's number one. So right now, my friends are making a lot of good films, you know, but most of the films are based on dialogue. But that's okay, because you have to know the knowledge first. So at the end of a three-hour film, dialogue, intelligent information being put out there, at the end of their film, last thing they will mention is food, clothing, and shelter. Hmm. So you see that after all of the knowledge is taken in and dissected and dealt with, then we have to go to action. And when that happens, it's self-sufficient, self-reliant, you know, so we could be respected, um, we will put ourselves in the right position because the system always breaks the hearts of the people that don't know where they belong. You see? So and our people have become a broken spirit now. You know, they hurt one of us, kill one of us, and we cry and we march. Our spirits are broken. You know what I'm saying? Then uh, after we stop crying six months later, they hurt us again some more. So we haven't put ourselves in the right place. We don't know where we belong. So our hearts are always going to be broke, Dr. Baruch. So that's why we have to create these things. We have to create uh, uh, create these holistic environment, uh, environments, you know, because it had always been part of us. And now that it's not part of us, we, again, we suffer for it. Hmm. So it's always going to go back to the land, you know. Because the Most High created the land force before he even put us here. So the land was our infrastructure and our job. Hmm. So it's no reason why that none of our men out here should not work. Hmm. So I don't know if the people can afford to watch that on their clock, see all our men go into waste. But I just can't watch it on my clock. And that's all I did here in Georgia for the past 15 years. I saw what I saw. And I try to do my best. And right now, you know, I feel like I did that. I listened to my ancestors. They're the reason why I had to do these projects because I had no clue. I just came here and saw what I saw and listened. And I knew that, you know, part of my preparation for all these years was to do some of these projects, which I'm very thankful for because it had enlightened my spirit. You know, it had enlightened me, enlightened my spirit. And I'm very thankful that I was even inspired to go to, to travel that path. Hmm. We're talking to Brother Ibrahima. He is the, uh, the, the producer of the video Food, Clothing, and Shelter, Volume 1 and 2, Volume 2, The Ripple Effect. And uh, you make reference to the Dogon. Yes, sir. You know, in the United States of America, if we were to mention the Dogon, most people who look like me would say, what is that? Can you uh, in make us aware of what and who the Dogon who were and what they are today and what that energy represents? Yeah, well, you know, I'm still studying myself, you know. Um, I come across material. And it make like I read the Dogon creation story, it might make more sense to me than a lot of the other creation stories that I read. But the Dogon is a people from West Africa, and Africa was Africa is one to me still is one. Uh, the uh, colonialism had divided Africa into 
borders and everything into tribes and but the people had always been one and the people had been star people so the Dogon had taught us about star Cyrus about constellation uh, for me I had come across the signs of the Dogon book right here which I had read in Atlanta and um, it just correlate with everything that I'm doing and working on so uh, I was like alright this is our elders this is our people these are black people these are the people that taught uh, people about about constellation these are people star people that taught us a lot that we didn't know about and I read I read the I Ching and um, this young Chinese kid went to Mali and told us that he had traced the origin of the I Ching back to the Dogon people so you see so in the I Ching when I read the I Ching it talked about the Xi'ans the heavenly beings that came to earth <laughs> you know with the knowledge then when I read the Dogon creation story it talked about our elders that came from the heavens to restore order down here so again our people always had connected if we only tap to the history so what I wanted to do as a filmmaker I wanted to tap the origins of everything that we do here with the growing of the food and tie that origins with our people you know so that we could have a, a, a deeper understanding of what we're dealing with uh, have a deeper explanation of it from our elders that were here before us. So that's how I tapped into the Dogon. But um, in some of their writings, it says how the Dogon explained their knowledge, mythology in the context of deliberate interaction uh, that use keywords, themes, and symbols that function co cooperatively as sophisticated uh, mnemonic device and we're close, closely intertwined with fundamental civilizing skills. So they always had taught us, even today in Africa, a lot of people, they mimic the stuff that they see that happen in the village every day. So they have to do the same thing by watching and observing. So the same thing is happening uh, with the Dogon creation story. It says how these things and symbols find expression in the routine acts of daily life, such as weaving cloth, making a clay pot, and plow in a field. So these things are part of us. So the people that explain that better to me, I find that to be more useful, more uh, uh, meaningful also. So that's how I got to get into the Dogon. I am still learning more and more about them. So I know a lot of our people here are much more study on that subject. So um, hopefully one day you will find somebody that's into that discipline and it would give you more information about the Dogon than, than I possibly can. Mm -hmm. You spoke about the when a man controls another man's food, he controls him. Right. What are some of the results of allowing someone else to control our food? What What can you point to today and identify as these are, these are challenges that are brought about on us as a result of allowing someone else to control our food? Yeah, well, dependency is one. Mm. And losing yourself, your, your dignity is two. Your self-worth is three. So these are, these are unacceptable behaviors, you know. We can't, we can't afford it. We can't, we can't allow it. Not here in America, not in Africa, not nowhere. So that's why, you know, Projects like Ripple Effect is very important. Right now in Atlanta, people are changing the way they think. They say you want to know a problem for people. You don't have to do much, Dr. Baruch. You just have to look at the way they think. <coughs> Excuse me. And you know we ain't thinking right. Not even our, our co-hosts, white people, they're not thinking right either. Nobody could change the situation. And, and we are learned people. So that's what I'm saying. So, you know, we, we can't afford that. So that's why we have to take control of our lives and take control of the food, Could take control of everything that we deal with, that we consume. We have to educate our children about what's real. The, I mean, uh, I had experience one time where lady was at a, a, a restaurant and she ordered for everybody and had to call home and ask what Maymay and Tay Tay would like. You see? 
So from now, we're not having the connection at home. We're not eating at home. We're not preparing the food. The children don't know who prepared that food and put it on the table. You see, that helped kept the family. So, but like I said, what we experience here, Dr. Baruch, is what you go experience for the most part in most urban cities in Africa. Uh, it's what you go experience in most countries that host black people in Europe, in South America, everywhere. And at this time, that's unacceptable because our forefathers taught everybody how to use their hands and how to do certain things to be civilized. So all of a sudden, the children worldwide look like they have lost the knowledge. So once you lost the knowledge, you also lost the wealth. Because knowledge of wealth, uh, knowledge of self is knowledge of wealth. You see, you cannot be poor once you have knowledge of wealth, knowledge of self. Hmm. So, and our people, they know these things. We knew these things. But again, by being dependent, you know, that's hurting everything. And it's hurting our children. So, but there's people that are doing everything right now. There's a lot of people that's doing efforts in Atlanta and I'm sure in many other cities. So we want to join these efforts. We want to help these local farmers. We want to make sure we see everybody growing food and being in their right mind and, and doing the realistic things that our forefathers did. Hmm. Yeah, because other things are robbing us from our wealth and, and, and robbing us from our lives too because then our life terms is short now. People are not living as long as they used to because of the food that we intake. Hmm. The water, if it's not alkaline, it's not water. You see, they took the water out of the water, Dr. Baruch. Hmm. So now we want to see from our learned brothers and sisters, you know, we want our learned brothers and sisters to do research, to write about these things, to tell us about these things. The children want to know. Because at least now we all know how to read and write. And we need to know these information so that we could start to take the right steps in the right direction. But if nobody want to sacrifice and do the dirty work, then people just going to be left in the same predicament. You see? But our ancestors now, you know, they are using us in, in different ways. Like I've been used here in America. I never knew that I would be here for excess amount of years working on projects like food, clothing, and shelter, like homelessness, a young man, you know, got to travel, got to make money, got to do all these things. But I had to listen to the voices that spoke to me. And so the same way some of y'all are going to be used, you're going to be used in Africa. Because you're going to see that when you get over there, uh, people can't agree. They're always arguing. And so the elders going to use you to do the work over there. The same way they're using me over here. Because people who know better, they don't argue. Because one thing they know for sure is when they argue, they're going to perish. You're going to perish, I'm going to perish. So that's why we can't afford those things. And every time you go around the community, people are just arguing. They can't even, you know, come to an agreement. You see? So these attitudes have to change. The way we think has to change. When we change the way we think, we're going to change the way we eat. You know, like George Washington, I mean, um, uh, 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 George Clinton, he says, if you if you change your mind, my behind will follow too. Same thing. That's that's profound. That's very true. Our people need to. We need to change really though the way we think, because there's nothing here that supports support the proper way of us thinking. It's not the food. It's not the water. But these things could be changed if we just show interest. We're talking to but brother. We're, we're, talking to, we're talking to Brother Ibrahima. He is a film producer, and he's talking about the, the origins of him taking on the project, Food, Clothing, and Shelter, The Ripple Effect. And uh, Brother Ibrahima, you, you, you're hitting a, on a lot of things that resonate with those of us who are in our listening audience here. Hey, go, man. It's Washington, D.C., man. You know, it's some heads over there, man. It's some genius over there, man. So that's why I try to be real mindful and very careful of what I say. <laughs> because I know I got some very intelligent listeners over there. And these are the people we need. These are the people we want. Like this film here, everybody helped made it happen. Uh, my brother Ali, he's been a partner with me for a very long time. He had drove me all over the place when I couldn't even afford to give him $1. Today, I probably could afford to give him up to five, ten dollars. But back then, I remember I could even give him one dollar. Mm -hmm. This brother had drove me everywhere. But with this new film, he saw it, and he believed in it, and he put his family on. 
his family watched it, and they believe in it, and they put Dr. Baruch on. Mm -hmm. You see, so that's how we want this film to be. I'm uh, Gratitude, I'm so thankful. Yeah, you and know? we're going to so be that's showing how we, you. What's, what's how we want to see this project, you know, uh, succeed, Dr. Baruch. We're going to be showing the film here at uh, the restaurant, Everlasting yeah. Life. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely want to have you on to speak more on it or at least to introduce it as there'll be an audience of people who want to learn more about the project that you have there. I want to drive down a road that may not be comfortable for most of us here in the yes, United sir. States of America, and that is, you know, if, if all of this benefit comes out of the soil, if all of this benefit comes out of the food, then what is your translation of the the work that's being done by Monsanto and Arthur Daniels Midland and, and Syngenta and Dow and DuPont? You know, aren't they doing good by the people? Well, you see, some of those people are just focused on doing the, whatever they're doing. So what I want my people to do is also focus on what they're doing. You see? Because it's always going to kind of interact because what they, they don't have our best interests in mind. Mm -hmm. None of these people. Mm -hmm. The only people that's going to have the best interest in mind for us is going to be us, Dr. Baruch. Mm -hmm. And we got everything that we need today. There is no more excuse, my brother. We got everything we need. We got the knowledge. We got the resource, Dr. Baruch. We got the know-how. Uh, we got everything we need to push this thing to its highest potential. But one thing I tell the people here in Atlanta that helped me form my film by buying a bracelet, a simple bracelet. I only engraved three little lines on there, Dr. Baruch. And symbolically, I told them that's a reminder for them in all their worldly affairs, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Because hmm. I believe that's the only thing we lack as a people, to push this thing to its highest potential. We got everything we need today. We got the learned men, we got the manpower, we got the know-how, we could even put our resources together, and we could fund anything. So by us taking those initiatives and making those starts, then the world will see these things. And the world have no choice but to respect us because they know we were never offer nothing. And we create, we offer in ourselves the things that we were not offered. And when we were able, we helped everybody. Our forefathers helped everybody. They, they taught everybody things that would help them better their lives. So that's how we need to see our people being engaged. And so at the farm, I will see youngsters come to the land, Dr. Baruch, and do some outstanding work. And I'm over there saying, thank you, my brother, thank you, sir. they like, no, thank you, sir, thank you for the opportunity. My brother, I will have chills on my body, man. Mm. When you see the young ones just come in over there, they tell me, oh, over here, the police can't tell me I can't sit here, I can't stand over here, you can't walk over here, you know, all the conditioning that it come with. Mm -hmm. So when we create our space, we also creating, you know, we protecting our dignity, you know. We, we, we respect in ourselves. You mm -hmm. see, we're doing these things. And before you know it, everybody going to come. Because the ripple effect, if you watch it, everybody's on it. And everybody's giving their testimony about how they feel with the land, about how they feel with growing their own food, about the stuff that they learn from. Everybody's there, have their hand dirty. So when the people in Africa now see us over here doing that, that also is going to motivate them, Dr. Peru for them to do the same thing. Because we are now starting to look up to uh, Western ideas, like you have to have the big house, the nice car, and the nice clothes, and everything that will make you detached from the land. Hmm. You see? So when our people in Africa see us here, see the successful ones got their hands in the dirt, well, then they're going to check themselves. They're going to be mindful, oh, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Because one thing that touched me at our farm is everybody come uh, every Sunday. People say, oh, this is like church. Oh, this is like school. And when you come, you will find uh, people from homeless shelters. Uh, they got their hand in the dirt. Some of my family and friends, these are attorneys. They got their hands in the dirt. Students from the, from the university, they got their hands in the dirt. Children got their hands in the dirt. Uh, old folks got their hands in the dirt. Grandma got her hand in the dirt. 
And Dr. Baruch, you couldn't tell who came from the shelter and who the attorney is. And we are all at each, each other's level. You see? Mm-hmm. So these things, you know, as community, these things are what's, what, what's to be guided because that's how we will be able to do something when everybody's working together in discipline ranks. And so together we're going to be able to yield more and we will have more than enough. And so we went to the prisons also and built gardens for our brothers and sisters, you know, so they would have a space that they could sit and meditate, you know, grow their own food, eat better, think better, you know, so when they come out, they'll be able to join some of these progressive things that's happening here. So our people got all this, we we got it. We just need our people to support these efforts. That's what we need. And that's what's going to be more meaningful. That's what it's going to mean more. We just need the people to participate, contribute, uh, get the land. The people don't have the land. If you have the land, then we could build alliances, partnership. And, and the people who are ready to grow the food, they could use that land. They could grow the food. And Dr. Baru, you will have the food you need. Your family will have the food you need. And your community will be stable. Somebody got the tractor, bring it over. You see? So everybody pulled together. And I'm a young man, and I got all these people just chipping in because they just saw the little efforts that I, I'm doing. And I'm sitting out here funding it with copper bracelets. So I had a lot of help. I, I couldn't take no credits for doing everything by myself. I did not, and I wouldn't have probably even ever be able to do it. But I see my people, they have the interest, and they see the urge, the need for it. And so, you know, they came and helped. So we all need to participate in funding, in supporting, giving moral support, and giving financial support to the people that's doing this work because our ultimate liberation is through the land. Hmm. You know, Brother Ibrahima, uh, again, we're, we're talking to a brother who's gotten his hands and his body and his spirit back in touch and in tune with the land and the plants and creation. But Brother Ibrahima, we, we have to, at some point, engage the conversation. Why have we seemingly been targeted, you know, with, with all of the bad food that is out here across the United States of America? Why do we find it so heavily proliferate, proliferated in our community? Why is it that we find ourselves so sick, you know? And, and, and what, what, what is it about us? You know, I'm reaching into that Dogon understanding. What is it about us that makes us then this target? Okay. And I'm glad you bring it up. I'm glad you see it as a target because a lot of people don't see it as a target. A lot of people don't see that it's more of us on the bottom than the few of us on the top. And Dr. Baruch, if the, if the bottom fall, my brother, the top would just collapse. So our foundation is the bottom, and we need to protect the bottom. And three-quarter or half of the bottom of our people is out on the street, Dr. Baruch, whether it's in Atlanta, it's in Washington, D.C., it's in New York, uh, it's in Johannesburg, uh, it's in Lagos, uh, it, 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 it is in Brazil. Our people are suffering everywhere. And, Dr. Peru, I have to remind you that there were more Indians, Native Indians, than there was black people here. And today, we barely see any Native Indian walking around, Dr. Peru. And those people did not get out of here overnight, you know. It took a while, you know. So I'm glad you see that, that the people are a target. And if nobody do anything about the people that's a target, then they're going to fall. The bottom is going to fall. It's been so many people getting fed downtown, Dr. Baru. Hundreds of people, maybe thousands. And can you imagine, Dr. Baru, if some of those people that come and, and feed those guys outside, give them a handout, imagine for whatever reason, for whatever uh, 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 emergency could happen and those people are not able to come out for a week, Dr. Baruch. What's going to happen to those people that's standing on the line to try to get some food? Yes, sir. Well, 
it's uh, we, we see that happen. We see that outcome. And we see that outcome year after year after year as as in Washington, D.C., we're seeing the homeless shelters being reduced in size. Meanwhile, the number of people that are homeless and in need of shelter are increasing. You know, and these, people are dying. They're getting sick. They're mm-hmm. getting TB. Don't you know, even in the shelter for you to sign up, you have to take certain tests like TB tests. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, it's a TB breakout in the shelters, Dr. Baru. And these are brothers and sisters mm. and our children, and they live in these places. Mm-hmm. And we walk past them every day. Yeah. And some of us even give them a dollar and feel good about ourselves. Right, right. Brother, because we feel like I, I've seen somebody that I'm better, I'm better than this person. Mm. But that's not an attitude that we ever had. Remember Malcolm told us, Martin told us, when one of us is oppressed, all of us is oppressed. Right. So... The best way to terminate us is let the people, the few on the top, keep looking down on the ones on the bottom. Because mm-hmm. again, if the bottom four, the top, I don't care how much money you have, the top is just going to collapse. It's no good. Right. It's done. Right. So that's a lot. That's a lot going on. I don't know why somebody want to annihilate us or stop us from being... But I'm just saying, I don't, I don't even believe that, you know, that is a possibility. But sometimes when you go out and see some of the things you see and watch my first film, you see my first film, I mean, it will make you cry. These are your people. This is, these are our people. You see? And, and if the majority is suffering like that, then something is wrong. And we have all these learned people. We have a lot of learned people. We, all our people went to school out here. And we can't change anything we can't change nothing you, you know see? you know we, it, it, we, we what we, i'm saying mm-hmm. is uh today you find it here you find it in africa you we what we what we have been trained mostly you find 24th century slaves that has a degree uh that could be a mayor uh that could be a rap star that could be a president that could be this that could be that, that it could be everything but you dare not must I not dare see you cross the street talk about helping your people. Hmm. You can't do that. So what is the purpose of my education? Is it to buy me a nice house and a nice car? Dr. Baruch, I could sell drugs to get that, you know. Hmm. I didn't have to spend 10, 15 years to go to school, you know, to get that. Right, right. You see? So now we want to we wanna see our people just really show empathy, show love. Just give a little bit of what you have, just a little bit of your education, and watch how far we could go, and watch and see who could even target us, or who even think that they could eliminate us. But if we don't do these things, then we are vulnerable, Dr. Baruch, to be eliminated, to be annihilated, and to be taken out of here. Hmm. But the Mosai has the ultimate plan, and that plan never fails. Nature has a plan, and nature's plan never fails. But if you're not aligned with nature, if you are not in tune with nature, then you're going to fall. Your plan is going to crumble as a man. But if we put ourselves in the right place, then we will be in flow with nature, and we will always put ourselves in the right place, in the right position. And we're not going to be vulnerable. And that way we will stop our hearts from being break every time. And that way we could once and for all uh, solve this problem of the killing of black male and black children. But if we don't do that, then it's just going to keep happening over and over. Like I said, the system breaks the hearts of those who don't know where they belong. Every mm. time, Dr. Baruch. Mm. We're talking to Brother Ibrahima, a film producer, and the most recent product has, has come out. It's Food, Clothing, and Shelter, Volume 2. The ripple effect. Brother Ibrahima, you, you mentioned getting support. Those in my listening audience who might be inclined to support you, how would they support the effort that you have engaged? Okay, beautiful. Yeah, so uh, my brother Ali, he had just went home to D.C. Uh, two weeks ago, and he made some connects. So um, he had went and saw the Blue Nile, uh, Brother Duku, the business owner, the herbs man, he got the food, clothing, and shelter volume two, the ripple effect, and his address is 2826 Georgia Avenue, Northwest Washington, D.C., 2001. His number is um, 
Um, you could also check out our website. We have a website called um, www.foodclothingandshelter.org. So the website is foodclothingandshelter.org. And um, you'll see most of the stuff that we're working on here. It's a new website. We're still constructing it, but it, it, it does got quite a uh, few information that's valuable. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Abba. I am considered a street journalist. And street journalism is the model and paradigm of journalism, Dr. Baruch. Like you said, the stories has to be from the heart, you know, compelling stories. Stories ain't got to be always for, for profit. So that's how Food, Clothing, and Shelter gave birth. So what we're doing with that, we are creating... Uh, love and passion for humanitarian causes through the uh, revelation of documentation. So these documentations are going to continue in America, in Africa, in Europe, everywhere that our people is, because I totally believe that it's our time now, especially if we just have a little bit of, you know, moral and financial support from our own people. You know, we'll be able to much help ourselves and help other people in the world because if we are free the whole planet will be free so help a black youth be free so the planet will be free again my name is uh ibrahim asadiba i hail from senegambia and um i'm a street journalist here in atlanta and i'm very thankful that today i had the opportunity to talk to dr baruch through a great uh family connection and uh hopefully i will be coming to washington dc to show this film and get to talk and connect with the people over there some more, especially Dr. Baruch with the E-Life uh, online radio. Very thankful for all the efforts that y'all doing over there. All the people that got the know-how, everybody that's showing empathy and love, you know, to a dying people, to a people that's trying to free themselves, to a people that's just trying to help and love everybody and make everybody better, you know, so uh, I thank you over there, whatever you're doing over there to contribute to our progress and to uh, contribute in protecting our dignity and our being. I salute you. Thank you, my brother. We're going to do our part over here. Encourage everybody to grow the food. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I, I appreciate, you know, the work that you're doing, and I appreciate the connection. <laughs> and I look forward to being able to connect up with you and to learn and, and to be a part of the project, the Food, Clothing, and Shelter Project, The Ripple Effect. We want, we want Everlasting Life. We, we own the restaurant Everlasting Life as well. We have two other vegan restaurants yes. here in the area, and we look yes. forward to being a participant in that yes. ripple effect. <clears throat> yes, so. and then by you saying that, that's the support I had. <clears throat> I was able to build alliances with some of the business owners that care, like a sister over here, elder sister in Atlanta. He, she owned a restaurant called Healthful Essence. It's a vegan restaurant. And um, she was able to allow me to use her food truck, Dr. Baruch. And this is a $100,000 truck or maybe more. I don't even know. But she had me use the truck, brought it to the farm. And everybody that helped me at the farm, all the sisters prepared the food. And we load up the food truck and we went downtown and we shared the food with our brothers and sisters. That was part of our giving back with the farm. So little efforts like that, you know. And what you're talking about, Everlasting Life Restaurant, the same thing. You'll be amazed what some of these uh, uh, small efforts could do. It could change big things. So we thank you, Dr. Baruch. And I'm so happy I talked to you. It's like I've been knowing you for years. Yes, sir, brother. Yes, yeah. sir. Kindred spirits, indeed. And uh, again, we want to thank you, Brother Ibrahim Abba, for coming on board today and sharing with us that which you're obviously passionate about and that uh, you want to grow and build upon so that we can have a positive impact and that positive ripple effect on the world. Right. want to thank That's you for right. coming on board, brother. And uh, we look forward to staying in contact with you. So any new things that you got coming up, please be sure to let us know so that we yes, can bring indeed. attention to it. And you can email me at Ibrima, E-B-R-I-M-A underscore B-A at yahoo.com. Love you, Washington, D.C. Y'all keep your heads up. Thank you, brother. And until the next time. All Peace. right. Peace. 
Again, Brother Ibrahim Abba, the Food, Clothing, and Shelter, Volume 2. The ripple effect is, uh, is the name of the video and the movie that he has produced. And I see he's got awards already for what it is that he's produced. So you all want to make sure you get yourself a copy. You can go to his website and you can also... Uh, come here to the restaurant, and as was articulated, you can go to Blue Now Bookstore in the Washington, D.C., Georgia Avenue corridor. We're going to be back with some more great programming. You all stay tuned for more of the, well, this 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 will be great programming under the eLife Media Network. So you all stay tuned. We're going to be right back. 